consider in today's episode is, well, it's a question we get asked quite a bit at Oracle. It's when people are starting to plan and get ready for an ADF project, that project managers, team leaders come up with the question, how many people do we actually need? How many ADF skilled people do we need on our projects? Now, very hard thing for Oracle Corporation to answer because we've got no idea of the scale of your applications. But what we can give you is some assistance of the different roles and skills that you will need to get an ADF project underway. Now, let's be very clear here. These skills and roles that I'm going to tell you about, you don't need a person per each role or skill as such. Depending on the scale of your application, a one-page application with one developer or a multi-page cross-enterprise application um, where you've got many developers, the different developers may take on one role or multiple roles and skills. Okay, so you've really got to keep that in mind in what I'm about to tell you. But generally speaking, I'm going to give you some uh, ideas of some of the roles and skills that you need before starting off on an ADF project. So first, let's consider the ADF development roles. Now, obviously, you're going to need people on your team that are skilled with ADF. Now, depending on your team, you might have one developer, you might have multiple developers, or working on an ADF application. We, again, can't tell you how many people you're going to have. Now, a typical team structure, though, if you've got multiple people, is you will have one ADF team leader and a number of ADF developers, maybe senior or junior developers. Now, it's a good idea that the ADF team leader and the senior developers are skilled in ADF, okay? In any technology, you always want somebody with skills and experience. Now, this presents a bit of a challenge for a number of our customers out there, we know, because there isn't a huge amount of ADF people available. Definitely are ADF people out there, but not like Java programmers or not like .NET programmers. So, how do you solve this problem? Well, two suggestions we'll give you is go and hire somebody, get a consultant in or hire in an ADF person with skills, um, get somebody in who does have experience. Please do not start large ADF projects without anybody skilled on your, who is skilled in ADF. This is a surefire way to have a disaster on your hands. Secondly, there is a different approach you can take, but it requires a little bit of perseverance and, a, and, a, and I guess a long-term outlook. Don't start building your big ADF application with a bunch of people who aren't skilled in ADF. Rather, start a small application development with a couple of key developers who can get skilled up in ADF and can become the senior ADF developers of your next larger project and your team leaders and so on and so forth. And personally, I've seen this used successfully at a number of different organizations. A couple of sites I know of Australia now have huge ADF developments and they didn't dive in and just expected to be able to, do, uh, to build ADF solutions, uh, large ADF solutions straight off the bat. They built up the skills and they've been very successful in that approach. Putting aside ADF skills but related to the ADF space, there are some other development skills that you need to be familiar with. Okay, and you probably need on your team. Now, these skills and roles can overlap with your ADF developers, um, but in addition, you could have people who are just skilled in these technologies alone. The first one is database developers. Now, believe it or not, one of the key technologies that ADF integrates with is the Oracle database. I know, a surprise, but you, if you're going to make use of the Oracle database, not only will you need database administrators, but you probably need people with database development skills, PL SQL developers who know PL SQL, triggers, and how to write code at the database level. Now, strictly speaking, an ADF solution doesn't need any PL SQL, but if you're gonna make full use of the power of the database for doing batch data processing, PL SQL programmers um, may be something that you should have. In addition, if you're attaching ADF over the top of a legacy database solution, such as an Oracle Form solution, you probably want to integrate a whole bunch of PL SQL code. Now, not all code that's ever been written will be suitable for ADF. We don't know what mess your programmers have created in the past. I mean, to be blunt, programmers could have done anything. So that's why you probably need some good database developers on your team to work out, oh, is this code absolutely essential? How can we fix it, improve it, and help it to integrate into your ADF solutions? Putting the database aside and remembering that ADF is predominantly a Java or a Java Enterprise Edition solution, you will need in turn people on your uh, skills on your team such as Java programmers and people skilled in Java EE. 
so it's good to have somebody who knows the nuances of the java languages and has an understanding of some of the apis don't just let everybody be a raw beginner in java because this is going to make your job so much harder in adopting adf because not only does your team need to learn how to program an adf they also need to program it in java in addition, ADF is really an extension of the three-tier Java Enterprise Edition solutions or frameworks provided in the relevant specifications. And under the covers, it has a bunch of things like servlets and filters and listeners that it's quite worthwhile having somebody on your team at least understanding. Now, most ADF applications don't need to tweak those, but some do, and to have a well-rounded ADF uh, team, um, or a, a, I should say development team, you know, maybe having a Java Enterprise Edition expert on your team is a good idea. In addition, ADF Faces, the UI techno technology that ADF uses, is built on a Java EE technology called Java Server Faces, or JSF. Now to me, JSF is really quite easy to understand and um, I think it's a great idea that your predominantly your ADF programmers do go and look at the basic JSF spec to understand how it works. Because ADF does improve and extend upon ADF, but sometimes it abstracts so far away that under the covers that the ADF developers don't quite understand what's going on. That's because it's Java server faces that has an influence on the overall life cycle and how ADF faces in particular is put together. So it's worthwhile at least having maybe a Java server faces expert on your team and in addition having your overall ADF team members at least familiar with the basics of Java server faces or JSF. Now, not just talking about development, let's talk about design. Now, you will need a bunch of people on your team who are potentially designers and are, for, are responsible for designing your application. And that can be both from the technical perspective and the UI perspective and the architecture perspective. So depending on the scale of your application and how it fits into your enterprise, maybe it's a very small system or maybe it's a very large system that will have a number of integration points, you will need architects on your team such as enterprise architects, system architects and database architects working out how to create a performant and well integrated solution into your enterprise. Now there's a lot of controversy in IT about those roles and what they're actual what they actually mean, but generally you need somebody to be thinking about the bigger picture, not just thinking about the nitty-gritty stuff of how I get my pop list to work on a screen. How does the system fit into your overall enterprise is important. You'd notice on this particular slide that I've got in front of me here too, I talk about fusion middleware skilled architects. Now why have I got that in there? Now, ADF itself is obviously an Oracle technology and it typically one runs on WebLogic Server and maybe other Oracle uh, application servers. Now, that may not be the only Oracle product or Fusion middleware product that you have at your organization. And it's well worth having somebody who understands those other products, what you have licenses for or what even you can purchase from Oracle in order to make use of in your ADF application. For instance, we have a whole bunch of security products, identity management suite, our own LDAP solutions, and so on and so forth, that you could go to a lot of effort maybe writing yourself, but alternatively, you could just go and get Oracle's products and integrate them into your overall solution. Now, I'm not trying to sell Oracle licenses here. As we know, Fusion Middleware can integrate with other vendor solutions. But remember one of the sweet points of Oracle's Fusion Middleware solutions is the ability of it to integrate with other Oracle products. We have development teams who spend a lot of time looking at those integration points trying to remove bugs that you won't necessarily uh, be getting when you go to other vendors' products. Okay, so a Fusion Middleware architect or maybe a Fusion Middleware um, person who's aware of other Oracle products is a good thing to have on your team. The last two bullet points that are on the slide in front of you there in turn are web designers and user experience advocates or what's commonly known as UX. Now web designers traditionally, particularly in the web world, are people that put your web pages together, the look and feel and the layout and the colours and fonts. And you know, it is good to have them on a team. But the more contemporary example of a web designer is a user experience person or designer. I'm not quite sure what um, how you meant to um, uh, call them besides UX team members. Now, a UX person is kind of like the contemporary version of a web designer who's not just interested in look and feel and font. So that's part of their remit. But they're also interested in the productivity of the users using your systems. 
Now from a business perspective, this makes a lot of sense. Imagine you've got a data entry clerk who's inputting invoices into your system. Now the faster you can make them do that, the more productive they're going to be and the better it is going to be for your business. Okay, that's kind of a business example, but you can also think of examples from the consumer space. Say Amazon.com. The faster somebody can purchase books from the website, the more profits Amazon.com makes. And so a user experience person is also very much interested in how people interact with the computer systems and how productive they are, how easy it is for them. And it's a very, very interesting area of computing. So while you might get somebody who can design good looking screens, maybe you really need to have somebody in there who's thinking about how to build contemporary solutions to make your users, maybe customers, maybe your business staff, um, productive in using your systems. Beyond the development roles and the design roles, you will need a set of peripheral technical roles or skills in order to keep your ADF project running as well. Now one from the software development perspective, because our ADF developers will be writing code and releasing code into tools like Subversion and Git and other version control software, is it's not um, unusual at enterprises to have change control officers who control the whole process of that code check in and out, and also the deployment of the systems to dev to test production, notifying the relevant teams that the code has been released. They've got a lot of um, interest in the actual workflow of the software being pushed out to uh, your dev and test and prod systems as such. In addition, if your ADF solution is using a database, you'll need database administrators. If you're deploying your system to WebLogic Server or Glassfish or another Java E system, you'll need the appropriate administrators. And from the security perspective, depending on how your system integrates with your LDAP servers, you, how it punches through your firewalls, um, if you need uh, SSL or HTTPS connections, you, connections, you're going to need a bunch of people with security skills too. Broadly speaking, all these set of skills today in the contemporary IT speak are known as DevOps skills, um, though um, DevOps is a bit of a, uh, let's say, a sticky term in, uh, in IT development these days. Some people don't like it, some people do, but we're giving you an idea of some of the roles that you potentially need to support your software development in ADF. Now talking about supporting software development and not from a technical perspective but more from a managerial perspective, remember that you need people that surround your project to keep the project rolling such as managers, potentially IT managers, project managers, so people that are planning your projects, making sure that the project's following a particular path, isn't missing its milestones and so on. You'll need architects too, so yeah, these are kind of technical people, but they have the bigger picture in their head, change control officers as we mentioned. You may also need all those other sort of software methodology type um, roles as well, such as risk managers, quality assurance people, testers, and document writers. Why did I bring this up? Well again, some organisations out there really don't have these skills in-house and they'll attempt to just build systems without the peripheral skills and roles that are needed to support contemporary software development. Contemporary software development can be quite a tricky business, so you do need these sort of skills and these um, in-house skills to keep your projects rolling. Don't forgo all these roles just because you want to do it on the cheap. because ultimately a lot of IT projects fail out of there. In fact, I remember reading a study. most. IT projects, I think it was three out of four fail because of bad project management. Okay, so keep this in mind. It's not just about your ADF technical skills and all the technical skills that surround those, but all the peripheral skills to keep your software projects rolling. So we, in the last slide, did talk about QA or quality assurance roles, and of course it makes sense on your teams to have testers, okay? Now, uh, you can have sit people who are literally sitting there and doing manual um, testing on your solutions, but you can also have people who are setting up automated testing of your solutions. So you can run those automated tests again, do regression tests of your software to ensure the health of the software as it reaches milestones and gets released to maintenance and so on and so forth. Down at the development level though, you may actually need team members who are responsible for code reviews as example. So people that look at the code written by maybe your junior developers and your senior developers to make sure it's meeting good standards, it's not doing silly things. And these are good skills to have in your organisation by default, regardless if you're doing ADF development or not. Another set of skills or roles that it is particularly useful to have in your organisation is load and stress testing uh, skills. 
And by this, this is people who have skills in using tools like Oracle Application Test Suite, Apache JMeter, for taking your ADF solution and pushing it through a bunch of load, a number of sessions, a number of users to see how it handles that load. Because nothing worse than building a system that you need it to maybe deal with 100 concurrent users, but because unfortunately your developers never actually actually experiment testing with that much load, and it only hit, you know, hits 10 users. You really need people out there to push your systems to see how they'll handle the load, will they meet your requirements, and in addition, when the load's really quite heavy, or oh, does the system crash, or does the system handle a lot of load gracefully? Now, load and stress testing is a particular area that's of, of my own interest because I have, have quite a few skills in these areas, and I actually think it's, you don't even just need dedicated people who are load and stress testers, but I think your senior developers at least, if not all your developers, should be doing regular load testing on the code that they write. This just builds up a whole bunch of skills in performant code, which is great to have. They'll be writing solutions where, for instance, the ADF system talks to the database, runs a query, and oh, that query doesn't behave very well under 10 users or 50 users or 100 users. So getting load and stress testing skills into your team is a really good idea. In addition, from a QA perspective, always remember to get your users and your business custodians into the testing role. Remember the good old software development methodologies and best practices talk about don't develop your systems in isolation. And that last point really goes onto this slide. Get your expert users onto your system development, your end users, and your domain knowledge experts. Because particularly with large system developments for enterprises where there's some very specific systems that need to be built for parts of your business that only parts of your business or people in your business have a specific knowledge on, what we call uh, domain knowledge experts. In this case, Okay, you really need to have those people coming in and being a part of the overall build, the design, the build, the testing, and all parts of your um, system development. Now, again, if you've done a lot of reading in software engineering, this is kind of a common thing, uh, common theme. But a lot of systems do fail, and not many people do realize this, because the users are effectively detached from the overall development. The developers get a bunch of requirements, get a specification for them, and say, bye, we're going to go and code for six months, and then they come back and deliver something that nobody quite wants. So it's very important that you have the users, the customers, the key people of your organization that the system is being built to support um, brought forward into your software development.